Hello, my name is Matt, also known as Alpine. I like to build realistic buildings in Minecraft, and I also like to build them in cities. The cities that I build in look a little something like this. Today we are in the city of Sequoia, and I have five tips for realistic Minecraft buildings. Before we get started, if you find this video useful or you like it, if you don't mind clicking like, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps me to build more stuff like this. So appreciate it. Anyway, let's get started with number one. The first tip is to know the site's context. So what does this mean? If we fly more into the unfinished area of the city, where we have a lot of skyscrapers in the works, I have a plot that I would like to show you. This one down here is an empty lot right now, which is currently claimed by Alpine Construction. That's me. Hi, I'm Alpine. What you'll notice is on three sides, it's actually surrounded by pavement. So on the west side, northbound, you have a very large avenue with a lot of traffic. On the south side of the lot, you have this slightly smaller street. And on the north side here, you actually have this alleyway, which means that when you have garbage and recycling being picked up, you actually need to design on this side of your building a spot to put those dumpsters so that whatever the function of this building is, it gets collected somewhere along here so that the garbage and recycling trucks can come and pick it up without you having to drag it off to some weird spot. Now, what I also mean by context is the buildings around it. So not necessarily just from an architectural style, although I guess in Sequoia, there's quite a variety. You have these modern buildings and then more modern here and then sort of this like, uh, what is this, international style? I'm gonna stop talking because the architecture nerds aren't gonna like me for that. What's the what's the style for this one? The Mies van der Rohe one, is that international or postmodernism or something? I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comments. But what I mean by context, in a non-architectural sense, is that this building has a flat wall. So obviously you are not going to build your building going all the way up here and have windows. What you could do instead is do what this building did and just have a flat wall with no windows. Now, a lot of the times, especially if you are the one designing a Minecraft city, which in my case, that is what I am doing, you may need to specify to the builders or the developers of this lot that you cannot have windows up against here and the building should connect. So that's what I mean by context. Now, if we fly over here and take a look at this one, this tower was not originally built in the city, but rather was built way over there, kind of floating in the air. And then I pasted it in. So the context for this building was not this area. It was just a floating section over there. So realistically, what's going to happen with these windows down here? They're probably going to get covered up. So for the context of this site over here, which is owned by the city of Sequoia, also known as me, they will need to submit a development application that includes something to do with these windows. Similarly, we also have this very large site right here, also owned by the city of Sequoia, which does also require a development application. But if we talk about context, we in the city of Sequoia are going to have some Hunger Games, which is gonna be very, very fun. We have a lot of cool stuff that is in the works. And if we come down here, uh, don't mind this. This is a work in progress, so stay tuned for that. But uh, essentially, the context for that site there is that when players pop out of this and they say, wow, this is a really cool city, there's going to be potentially a building right here. You have to think about what you want it to look like from over there. You have to think about what you want it to look like from this street corner right here. You have to think about how much sunlight is actually going to get through. Now, there is a building right there, which sunlight does seem to be going through. I think that's something to do with my mods. Oh, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Also, a similar concept right here with this empty lot. This building goes up to right here with the flat wall and then transitions into windows. So whoever builds here can build from the bottom up to this section right here, but then they have to go out a little bit and then up Ideally, not to completely block the window, but there's a very good chance that there's going to be a building directly beside it. So let's fly all the way back to my apartment and let's go to tip number two. Tip number two, add structure and egress. When I say egress, I just mean you need to be able to actually get out of your building. So if we fly all the way up, to the top of this building, what you'll notice is there's actually some doors. Now, if we go inside and close that behind us, 
This, oh, that's not supposed to be floating. You didn't see that. This egress essentially just means a staircase. So you can walk all the way to the bottom here and it'll bring you all the way out. Now in real life, you obviously need this. You don't necessarily need it in Minecraft, but if you're really going for that realism like I like to do, then I would say this is pretty well necessary. Now this is not done, obviously, but there you go. There is your egress, also known as a way to get out. Now in a lot of my buildings, I also include elevators, so there is one included here. But if we go over to another building that is a work in progress, which I am in the process of making a video about, here you go. So the egress in this building looks a little something like this. And we're going to talk here about the structure as well. So in the center here, this is called a shear wall. And if you have been watching the channel for a while, I mentioned this in pretty much every one of my videos. A shear wall is the central core usually found in skyscrapers. I have one open elevator shaft because I like to design for creative and survival players. Way at the bottom there, there are a couple beds. I don't know why it looks like that when you zoom in really far. But if you jump down, you will be okay. Now, keep in mind, I don't do this in all of my buildings, so uh, just be careful. But uh, another elevator shaft right here behind closed doors. Another one right here as well. And then the egress is this section right here. And you can just walk all the way down or all the way up. Now, talking a little bit about the structure, I love to include what is called a structural grid. So in this particular case, it's quite simple. You just take a look at these beams and you see where they intersect. So where they intersect right here, this is where the shear wall is. So that is a structural component. But if you go all the way over here, you can see that there are these two ones right here. And these continue all the way down and all the way up. But if we go all the way to the bottom here, we can see that it continues here and then down into the ground. And if I go into spectator mode, you can see that it does indeed continue, although it's a little bit slanted so that I could get it out of the way. And it does continue all the way down here. And then you see the shear wall that also continues all the way to the bottom, which is three floors underground. So if we fly around, you can also see the structural grid and where they intersect, you just add your columns. It's a very, very easy way of adding your structure. And I feel it adds quite a bit of realism. Here is another egress right here. The base of this tower is a work in progress. There's the shear wall kind of poking out. And then I also have structure on the outside. Now, the advantage to having some structural elements on the outside, especially in these big towers, is that you don't need to have nearly as many columns on the inside. So I essentially just have these ones here, those ones there, and then these diagonal members that connect in 11 different segments all the way from bottom to top. So that's tip number two. Let's go all the way back and check out tip number three. Okay, tip number three, build in a city if possible. Now, I know this is not always possible, and of course it depends on your situation, but I really love to make Minecraft buildings, as you could probably tell. Now, not all of these are mine. Most of these over here are not. I did build this one and a lot of these template ones that look fairly similar and a handful of ones over there. But if you build in a city compared to maybe just in a regular flat world and then keep all of your builds separate, if you do build in a city, all of a sudden you have context. You have context for each one of your lots where you make your building. And it becomes a lot more interesting as well. Now, sure, it might get a little bit tiring when you do have to design roads, but if you have access to building tools like Axiom or WorldEdit, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Here's another building that I made, and I probably would not have made this one if I was not building in a city because the context for this particular building is all of these ones over here. You can see they look somewhat similar. Obviously, the size of this one is quite a bit larger, but if you take a look at the windows, they are two blocks by three. Over here, they are two blocks by three. So it gives some context from these other buildings to check out some of these window sizes, although I kind of extended these ones a little bit. It also allows you to copy and paste some of your assets, which basically just means if we go inside of here, we can see that this one has your internal egress or your staircase. So what I did is I copied it over to here. And if we fly in here, we can also see that, oh, look at that. We have a staircase, although it's a little bit different. Now, right now I'm inside of a block, but uh, yes, you can indeed walk all the way down if you would like. It just gives you something to bounce ideas off of if you build in a city. And to be honest, it's way, way more fun to explore. So let's head back to my beautiful building and then we'll check out tip number four. 
Tip number four, keep your materials simple. When I say simple, I mean relatively consistent. So if we take a look, all of the buildings that you are looking at right there, I have designed myself. Obviously with a lot of these, I have used red brick, but what you can see is instead of changing the entire material palette of every individual built, I basically just changed it up a little bit. So this up here, this is called a cornice. This helps keep some of the water off of the facade of the building here because generally water and buildings don't mix too well. So essentially what I did is I changed up the top for each individual one. Now these two are the same. I do like to stack them occasionally. And then uh, sometimes what I'll actually do is if we take this, we just change it up slightly. And uh, maybe if I take that, copy that down there, and then uh, maybe I'll put the air conditioner right here instead. And I have my axiom, so let me just do that. But uh, there you go. So now it's not identical anymore. Just a very, very tiny change. And uh, yeah, the buildings still look pretty much identical, but uh, there's a slight difference. Now, when we talk about material palettes, you can, of course, see that this one is obviously not brick. What you will notice, though, is if you take a look at the form of this building and the cornice way up top here, oh, look at that. It's actually the same thing. So what I did is I just changed the material and then I changed the design of the window just a little bit. So all of a sudden you can make a whole bunch of builds from one individual building and then use it as a template and just change it up a little bit. And all of a sudden you have a hundred or 200 different buildings. I believe in total, there's probably about 16 different building types. This road right here, all of these buildings along this road, these were the original templates. So this one was the very first building in the city of Sequoia. Then you have the seconds, and then I built this church, and then it got renovated by a guy named Josh. Josh is going to be in the comments. Go subscribe to his stuff. He's got some good stuff. But anyway, I made a bunch of templates. You can see I changed up the materials, but you can see that I didn't go too, too crazy with the material choices. I kept it relatively simple. You may also notice that down here, I also changed up the base of some of these buildings added some decorations. So these ones here for the most part are residential. And then over here, you do have a tiny little restaurant. So it just gives you a little bit of variation. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it looks pretty nice. So that's number four. And let's go check out tip number five. Number five, keep your scale consistent. What I see all the time, especially in city builds, where you have a lot of builders, the scale is not necessarily communicated. Now, here in the city of Sequoia, we build at a 1.5 to 1 scale, not a 1 to 1 scale, 1 1.5 to 1, meaning that if this building in Minecraft is 20 blocks tall, which it's not, it's probably, okay, it's 20, let's call it, let's call it 25. Never mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a different number that makes sense. Okay, let's try this. Let's say that this building is in real life 100 meters tall. So if you were building at a 1 to 1 scale, this would be 100 blocks tall. But since we are building at a 1.5 to 1 scale, a 100 meter tall building in real life would become 150 meters. This, in my opinion, just gives us a little bit more room to decorate. And I find it makes it a lot more pleasant to explore and walk through. Now, what you'll often see me do if we go over to my building right here, which I have made a video on a while ago, what you'll often see me do is build out a scale. So what I will do, I will take gray wool and green wool, and you can use whatever colors you want. But essentially what I'll do is I will bring the gray wool up. I will add some green wool. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then basically what I'll do is I will take this and I will stack it upwards. Now, what does this actually mean? So if we take a look at where I've placed it, you can see that we have the gray wool where the floors inside of the building are open and you can actually walk around it. Now, where I've put this green wall, that means that it is either a floor or a ceiling. I guess in this particular case, I would actually have to take one off because these floors are one block thick. Generally, I recommend that they are two, but in this particular case, I'm breaking my own rules. So I would actually replace that one and kind of do the same thing here. Oh, I seem to have messed it up. So actually that one would go here, nope. I'm, hold on, here you go. This would be the floor or the ceiling above, which you can see right there. It does indeed line up. And then this gray part is the open section. So generally when you do see me build, 
I will have this scale as one of the very first things that I do. Now, if we take a nice leisurely stroll along the streets, you'll notice that all of these shops are at the same scale. But if we had a building that was either at a two to one scale, so everything was quite a bit larger or at a one to one scale, it would look quite a bit different. And it would just make the experience of walking around not nearly as good as if it was the exact same scale. Now, an example of a one to one scale is this village right in here. Yep, this is a very old village that uh, was actually incorporated into a city park, which uh, I don't know, I thought was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. Keep your scale consistent. Those are my five tips to help you be a little bit more realistic when you're building in Minecraft. So number one, know your context. Number two, add structure and egress. Number three, if possible, build it in a city. Number four, keep your material simple. And number five, keep your scale consistent. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really like it, click subscribe. I have a lot of cool videos coming up about the city of Sequoia. I'm going to be designing a whole bunch of different stuff, doing a lot of city planning and working with some other builders on a lot of really cool projects. So stay tuned for that. That's all I got for you. See you next time.